higher notes 1.1 motion equations and graphs uh, in this note I'm simply going to do a, an example of how you use equations of motion to solve uh, a problem you'll have done many of these or will do so um, let's imagine that a ball is thrown vertically upwards at four meters per second. Okay, you can imagine that, I'm sure. And what I want you to do is find how long it takes to reach its maximum height. Okay. Throw up at four meters per second. Find how long it takes to reach its maximum height. Now it's not essential that you sketch a situation diagram, but to be honest, it's generally advised. It takes seconds and it just helps you picture what's going on. So very simply, this is all that's going on. I'm displacing the body slightly to the, to the right just to show you what's happening. So there's its um, launch upwards at four meters per second, vertically upwards. You can add in the fact that uh, V will be zero there. And you can also add in the symmetry that the velocity at the very end will be minus four meters per second by symmetry. And at all times, of course, body both on the way up and on the way down is accelerating at g that's minus 9.8 meter seconds to the minus 2. The minus 9.8 on the way up means it's decelerating because it's decelerating up in the positive direction and the minus 9.8 means that it's accelerating down in the negative direction on the way back. Right well you know that uh, you always list your variables vest. You need to memorize that list every single time. And then you put in uh, any what we call hidden variables. Now we're trying to find the time to reach the maximum uh, height. Okay, And we know that uh, at the maximum height the velocity is zero. So there's a hidden bit of information. Now before I proceed I'm going to put a little heading here first half of motion. It's very useful to do that because it lets the reader, the marker, know that all of your variables reflect that first that half of the motion. Obviously if it were the whole motion the final velocity v would not be zero, it would be the minus four. Okay, any other hidden information? Well, g minus 9.8 meters seconds to minus 2. So I put those two in red because they're generally regarded as uh, hidden variables. Hidden in the sense that they're not given to you in the question. You are assumed uh, to, to know them. Okay. And taking the first half of the motion is always quite useful because it allows you to gain new information by setting the final velocity uh, to be zero. Right, all of that is hidden. Um, what else do we know? Well, we're told it leaves at plus four meters per second. I'm just going to put the plus sign in there for clarity. 
and the time of flight is the unknown. So if we can find an equation relating u, v, a and t, then we can, we can solve this one. We won't need s. Right, so having looked at your variable list, you hopefully know that there is an equation connecting u, v, a and t, and it is simply v equals u plus a t. Zero equals four plus, now it's minus 9.8. Remember, projectile type problems like this and equations of motion problems generally, you do need the sign convention because the direction changes, so it's important. So that's times uh, whatever t is. Okay. So we basically then can rearrange that to be 9.8t equals 4. When the minus comes over, it becomes positive. t equals 4 over 9.8. And on your calculator, 4 divided by... 9.8 and you'll get 0 0.41 seconds. I'm just going to two significant figures there and that's your time of flight. Okay, let me ask you one more thing then. So part two, how I did the ball go. Oh. Well, we're, we're still working on the same motion as before. Uh, basically, it's the same acceleration. When the acceleration changes, then the motion changes, and you have to reapply U, V, A, S, and T. But we're still dealing with the same um, motion. And we're interested now in how, how high it goes. So we're looking for the, the height uh, h that it's reached. Well, because it's the same motion, um, we can use the same uh, variables. So we now know that t is 0 0.41 seconds. And we can say, OK, let's, let's find uh, s. So there's, uh, well, there are two ways of doing this. You can spot two equations, I'm sure, uh, involving uh, S. You've got S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So you could use that. Um, or you could use V squared is U squared plus 2AS. So I'm going to use that one. So same variable list, so I can just go straight to V squared equals U squared. 2as and again I'm just going to specify first half of motion right well v is 0 that is 4 2 into minus 9.8 sign conventions to apply S. I think it's a good idea to put all of that in square brackets and put the minus 9.8 in round brackets. Let's just tidy that up a bit before 4 to 16. That's going to be minus 2 of those. So minus 19.6 S. So 19.6 S is equal to 16 s is 16 over 19.6 so s equals Point eight two 
meters. And if that S doesn't come out to be positive, then there's something wrong. Okay, so that's how you uh, apply the equations of motion to solve some simple problems. And here endeth the note.